Hello and welcome to another edition of Here's the Pitch. I'm your YouTube friend Brad here and I thank you for coming here and I thank you for going to my title sponsor, Masses Restaurants in St. Louis. stlmasses.com is their website. Go check that out. Check out those menus if you're driving through St. Louis. There's five locations, so no matter what highway you are on and passing through or if you live here, you can find them and uh, delicious, delicious stuff. Today, it's another uh, look back at uh, some of the interviews I've done. Um, some of these maybe you haven't seen. When I started the Howard Stern series, all I really was interested was, you know, hearing from people that worked there. Wasn't looking for bomb throwing, wasn't going to tell you, you know, have people tell me how, you know, Howard was mean to them or whatever. But guess what? Some folks actually had that kind of thing to say about him. So um, over the year, a uh, year and a half that I've done these interviews, most have been complimentary and haven't said much. And I understand that. Um, and we just talked about the good times and the fun that they had. But guess what? There's a few folks who aren't real big fans and um, they they seem to talk about it. So here is my collection of those people talking about their experiences not being so great. Would you still be there, you think? Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm not the type of guy that goes, uh, you know, leaves places. I just I find my spot and I just keep going. So, yeah, I, I think as long as that show were still happening, I, I would have been there. Yeah, and so there was these changes. We see, we've seen this big summit meeting on YouTube. We've heard about it. Howard wants a list guest, and he's got this PowerPoint that he's put up in his crazy office. What, what was it like just for you as, as there was these changes? We all have heard of Marcy coming through. I don't know if she dealt with you guys as much, but what was it like for you? Honestly, it felt like the beginning of the end. Uh, it felt odd it felt everything that the show was great for was being changed and we all were sort of looking at each other rolling our eyes going what the hell is happening D doug did you i mean was that uh, across the board you know news department feels it uh the tv department feels it the wrap-up show the, listen, I won't name names, but everyone was just in disbelief and shaking their head after that summit. And when certain people came on board, it was just what the look. It the, was the, bizarre. It was the just, part about the summit that I liked was that, that Howard was pushing for more guests, and there there was a real attitude towards guests before that. You know, Gary would never look for guests, and and Howard would not want him to do that. And he used to always shock me. I'm like, Hey, this guy's in town. This guy's in town. Why aren't we getting them on? But Howard just had this different take. If they want to come on, they know where to find us. And uh, so I enjoyed that part of that summit where Howard was saying, Hey, we're going to go out and get the guests for once and have a, a, a actual booker for the show. Um, but it was the rest of the stuff that was odd. Hey, can I ask you one question? Sure, you just did. Uh, How about a second question? Uh, That'd be great. Hey, what do you think about Howard Stern on America's Got Talent? I haven't seen it. You did these interviews for a long time. You were paid by Howard, right? And then, and then, in two thousand nine, uh, not necessarily. That's not true. I was paid by the radio station. I was paid by KLSX um, for producing the show, and that was part of my deal. I go out and do the celebrity interviews and uh, and produce his show, and I sort of cut a deal with uh, that radio station. But Howard never paid me. I mean, the only time I get really got paid from Howard was when he left for Sirius, and uh, and I got paid by Sirius Radio for a couple of years. But no, the radio station Howard never dropped a dime on me. Um. <laughs> but I, so yeah, I kind of forgot that you were around during the Sirius days. So what happened at the end there? I, I mean, I I remember things. You had a confrontation with him on the air, right? And he because he said yeah. you were too aggressive or something on the red carpet. Give me that the end of the uh, time with Howard. Yeah, I mean. It goes, uh, it goes deeper than that. I was, you know, it was 2006 and I was sort of getting sick of being in radio. I wanted to like produce like reality TV shows and stuff like that. And I created a re reality TV show, um, following a porn star around, following porn stars around for like a day in the life of a porn star. And I pitched it to Howard TV and Doug Goodstein and, you know, Doug liked the idea and we went back and forth for like six, seven months tweaking it, me and my buddy. And uh, at the end, um, and we we had a meeting with my lawyer, conference call, where they were going to pay me a certain amount of money per episode. They are going to do like four to six episodes. And then, you know, it, it sort of just went down the tubes. Um, we even shot one 
I took a crew from Los Angeles and they took a crew from New York. We did it in Vegas at the AVN Awards, called it a day in the life with, uh, I don't know, J- JD was dating her or something like that. We were following JD and some Courtney comes. I don't know who the hell it was. Um, but anyways, I brought a crew and, you know, I thought, I thought this was cool. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to be a reality TV producer. It's going to, you know, because I knew that was the beginning of it in 2006. And my buddy, who was the camera guy and my producer, had shot a lot of reality TV shows. So we were like, oh, this is going to be the start of us being producers and stuff. And then it just faded. Like, they just sort of, like, put it on the back burner. And uh, it sort of really hurt my feelings, man, because I spent a lot of time on that. I mean, a lot of my time. And, and they said we had a deal. And then they turned around and did some of these episodes with, like, Jessica Hahn and Bigfoot and Miss Black Howard Stern. And I'm like, wow, they took my idea. Not that I have a you know, patent on or whatever, but they took it and didn't even give me a penny. And, you know, I'm left, you know, with my dick in my hand, you know, with these two shows where they could, you know, power was making a hundred million a year. You could have thrown me, Hey Gary, you know what? We're not, we're going to pass on this, but here's five grand for your time or whatever. You know, I know you spent six months on it. Nothing. They didn't give me a penny, nothing. And that's what really pissed me off. That's when I was like, fuck these guys. They're fucking assholes. They, 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 you know, they took this idea. I've been a loyal foot soldier for 15 years, produced the show, getting up at two o'clock in the morning for 15 years, going out and doing these celebrity interviews while I was working. And you know, I'd, I'd go do the celebrity interviews, go home for a minute and then come back, you know, and go back to work at two o'clock in the morning. So I was working around the clock and for them to do that. And Howard knew about it, you know, cause everything go, goes through Howard, by the way. Nothing does not go through how he knows every fucking inch of his show or what's going on behind the scenes or whatever. So when they did that, it left a really sour taste in my mouth. I was like, fuck these guys. They just fucked me royally. And not only that, but they're fucking doing shows with other characters, you know, and not even give me a dime, nothing. So I sort of self-sabotaged myself instead of saying, fuck you guys, I'm leaving like, like I should have, you know, I sort of just went out to an event and I created whole havoc uh, because I intentionally did it. And uh, I guess the uh, public relations firm called Sirius and Scott Greenstein and said, hey, if you have this guy at any more events that we're doing or wherever on the red carpet, you'll never have another one of our celebrity guests on Sirius Radio. And that's how it went down. Then they said, hey, we got to let you go. Now, there's a couple more instances before that that, you know, where I get pushed around and shit, but nothing really hardcore and heavy. Uh, one other instance, there's one on online with this guy, this camera guy, um, but he created the he created the havoc at the beginning, and that you know. But listen, it is what it is. I mean, the bottom line is, you know, I did great work for him. I got hassled. Nobody, nobody since has been able to do that shit out here. I mean, there's been no replacement, even though I think they've tried a couple times. Uh, so I'm not. You know, I just felt bad that they fucked me. And that, you know, and then that's when I went on, you know, about a year later, I went on some, I had a little podcast show that I went off and totally went off on Stern. And somebody, I guess he heard it and called me that morning, the Monday morning afterwards. And that's when we had the confrontation on the air. Which is what he wanted, right? He loves that. Oh, yeah. He, you know, basically he called me. I, I had partied at a famous Mexican restaurant called Casa Vega in studio city that like all the celebrities go to, I mean, major from Marlon Brando to the Kardashians to, I, I, I saw so many anyways, I used to live like a hundred yards from there and I'd go get wasted. I mean, it was like the, the coolest place to go. So I partied that night and then like five 30 in the morning, I got a call and I'm like hung over <laughs> half asleep and hung over. And, uh, you know, Gary says, Hey, Howard wants to talk to you. You know, I'm like, all right, put him on. So that's that's basically what went down, and that's when he's like denying that what's day in, like kept on saying what's day in the life, Doug. Doug came in and denied everything, and they denied everything. I mean, Howard acted like there was no day in the life. I go, you did day in the life. You did day in the life with Bigfoot. You did day in the life with Jessica Hahn, you know. And he just totally blew me off. And I that's when it was like, fuck you, Matt. You know, what I mean, I, I listen. I Howard put me on the map. I'm very thankful for my time with the show and my time at KLSX. And, you know, I mean, I wouldn't be where I am today, which is not 
you know, it's, it's cool. I mean, I'm digging what I'm doing. I mean, it's, it's fun to be able to be independent, but I mean, he put me on the map and I'm very thankful for it, but I mean, you know, I did, I did give him a lot of good material. I put, I've laid my ass on the line for him many, many times. I was a fucking loyal foot soldier. And, and not only that, but producing the show too, and not fucking that up. Uh, so, um, you know, it is what it is. I got nothing but respect for Howard, All but right. I, I just don't like that. He, he, he lied. He lied about what went down. He fucking knew about day in the life. He knew Doug knew if you listen to the phone call, in fact, maybe I'll play it this week, you know, on my show. Um, Doug even denied what's, you know, what are you talking about? And we, I have 50 emails going back and forth with him and I, you know, that I still have to this day. You know, so. Well, I get the sense if you listen to the show now, the Stern Show, you wouldn't be on anyway. There's no, there's no fun being had in the last uh, eight or nine years. So, yeah, I, I, you know, people told me about the show, and that every now and then they listen to it. And I, he says they, he's completely changed. It's a completely different show and all that. I haven't heard the show since 2008. I haven't heard one second of it. But listen, it's cool. He st- I still play his interviews. You know, I still play my interviews. He's never gave me any shit about that. You know, he's on the air every now and then, you know, when, when he's making comments. So, I mean, which I really appreciate that I've never had a, a call saying, hey, cease and desist or anything like that. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, he's the greatest broadcaster in radio history. He's the Michael Jordan of talk shows, no doubt. And, uh, you know, I have a lot of respect for him. It just the way it went down. And then, you know, I just felt like I just sort of felt like slapped in the face a little bit. You know, like here I busted my ass for you so many years. You know, when the FCC was coming down, I saved the, his, I saved the, the, the this Los Angeles license because they, they fined us 100000 You know, they flew in a lawyer from New York to show me how to cut the show up. And, I mean, Howard would talk about it and rail on me on the show. And I was like, Baba Booey would call me. Hey, did you cut this out? I go, yeah, Gary. You know, call New York. Call, call corporate. I go, call corporate. They told me to c- cut it out. Okay, I just want to make sure, you know. I go, yeah. You know, call them up. So, you know, I did a lot for that show. I mean, I laid my ass on the line. And it just it just felt like, you know, it hurt me. It was like a slap in the face when they couldn't even throw me a bone, you know, for uh, doing the doing tr- trying to produce a, a reality TV show. Yeah. What was what were those last days like uh, as you're watching Howard say, yeah, I have an idea. Um, we're going to get rid, rid of Howard TV, but I have an idea. What was it like? Because it. It happened on the air. He didn't tell anybody, as usual. Yeah, I mean, we all were shocked. I first thing I did is I turned around to look at Doug, and Doug sort of seemed dumbfounded too. I mean, so we had heard. Um, now I had been through probably five or six contract negotiations, whether it be radio or TV, along the way. So I was just assumed that you know this is just going to be another one of those negotiations, but. When he said it was going away, I still didn't believe it. I sort of was like, ah, he's really negotiating, you know. Um, But then as we heard more, and then Howard took us, uh, had a little brief meeting with us after the show, that it seemed real. And I was uh, like, oh, this doesn't sound good. But I still hoped that someone would come in. I, I, I thought, he's doing the radio show. Why wouldn't he want the free money to do the television show. We didn't ask for any of anything of him. You know, he he literally just had to do the show and we would handle the television part. So I really thought it would come back and um, it didn't. And I've heard other, I've heard various reasons for that, but um, who knows? So I'll let either of you answer this because it's probably difficult, but it now is being done the exact same way you guys did it. You set the, the, the template and uh, Sirius puts out clips, and it's basically done through Sirius. Why? I mean, my question would honestly be, why didn't they just ask you guys back? Or did you think there was something there that they didn't want this group back? They want to do their own. No, that's a good. That's a, that's a good question. Uh, I mean, it did take what three plus years for them to get back and do it. I think there was just like one intern or someone just pressing buttons, uh, and it was like that for a while. I would. The only way I saw it is, and I don't know how else to see it, is the clips on Twitter. And it was. I would call Scott and be like, "I can't even watch more than ten seconds of this. It's just they're destroying it." It's definitely gotten a lot better since with the clips I've seen. They've definitely put some uh, some 
meat into it and um, good production quality. But at the beginning, I mean, it took years before they had, uh, again, they, they, I think what Scott was saying, we just thought there would be just like we went from E to in demand, there'd be a seamless um, transition and that transition didn't happen. And it took years for anyone to come and pick it up. And that's, uh, I don't know if you could say no one picked it up and Sirius took it over or I don't know what happened there, but that's what happened. It just, they, they had our phone numbers. Um, they knew how to get in touch with us. I, I'm curious to this day why they didn't, whether it be, you know, I thought of everything. Was I too political? What did Howard, uh, was he not into the arguing anymore? Um, did Marcy think uh, we were bad for the culture there? I, you know, so uh, did we get paid too much? I, I, I don't know. It, it could have been any reason, uh, but they never called. You know, they, they called for one thing, to help. Uh, I'll tell you a story. Um, after we had just left, Gary asked uh, Doug and I to help with a, the birthday show that was coming up. Howard's big, what is it, 60th birthday party, I think. So we had been through those. Doug always ran the, the whole, practically, the, the guts of the behind the scenes of the show. So he and I went, and I went in, took a meeting in the city, and I told him, here's where you're going to want Howard, here's where you're going to want the stage, blah, blah, blah. I told him a bunch of stuff. Um, Doug then went and put all the finances together and said, all right, this is what it's going to take. Uh, then I hear from a camera guy who I know, who talked to my wife and said, you know, Scott asked me to do the birthday show, but uh, I've just been hired by another director. I was like, what? So we call up Gary and Gary was like, oh, how'd you find out? Like, not sorry, I should have told you guys. I mean, we we had taken these meetings and we budgeted the whole thing and we had worked on it. And uh, it just felt like we're already down because we're looking for work now. And then he just kicked us in the nuts, you know. Yeah, that that's a story that um, you know I moved on. I didn't really look back, but that's just, that was the hardest pill to swallow. That was just classless and disgusting. You know, let's not <laughs> let's not sugarcoat it. That was pathetic and really just unforgivable. And why it was done, I don't know, but I know that didn't just sting. That hurt, and uh, it hurt Scott. It hurt everyone on the TV team. You know, people were just in disbelief. And then to make it even worse, not one person from the TV crew wasn't even was even invited to the to the actual party uh, after that classless act. And then on top of that, uh, there were empty seats that they were handing out free tickets on the street to strangers uh, the night of the event. So yeah, we were told uh, there were no I, seats I, left. That what? We were told there were no seats left. That's why we couldn't go. Yeah. And I was told directly from someone why we weren't invited. And it was someone's decision who came on board late uh, and, and late in the game. I don't know what the vendetta was or what kind of mindset or some kind of what kind of insanity was going on where you rationalize and justify not inviting a loyal set of uh, troopers uh, after they, <laughs> after you just took the gig away from them without even telling, listen, this is the stuff that people know about. I'm not uh, shedding light. I'm maybe shedding a little more light on it, but these stories are out. You've heard these. That's the truth. Okay. Uh, that, that owed everyone an apology, but of course not because, uh, you know, that's not the way it works over there. How do you, I mean, Baba Bowie has been there forever. He's very loyal to Howard. Do, do you just chalk it up to that or? Do you go, come on, be a human being? I don't think Gary had anything to do with it. I'm just, I'm just saying anything that happens with Gary and, and just, he, you know, he's been shit on for so many years, but has a huge house, has beautiful stools in his <laughs> basement. Um, is it, is it, is that just what it kind of is? Is that he's just a loyal soldier and he's going to retire happy and wealthy? He's not going to ruffle any feathers. He's got a great gig. <laughs> Listen, he's, he's, he's ridden the wave for this long and you know he's he's probably close to retirement age so i get after the next uh, contract he's probably done you know i don't he's think not gary was, i don't think gary was going to go to bat for me anytime soon after the whole sleeping <laughs> video that doug really was responsible for <laughs> but i took the heat i just watched that 
again, to do, I do research here and the research is watching old clips on YouTube and that is hilarious. I mean, just some of the stuff that goes on. Now, do you guys watch YouTube and look at some of these old things or is it, I did it. I don't care. I'm not that big a fan. I'm pissed off or whatever. I mean, you know, a lot of people, I'll be on the golf course. A lot of people ask me stern stories and I always come up with the same four or five stories. And I'm, I'm like, so every once in a while I'll look for something and watch something and it reminds me. Um, but no, I, I don't really do a lot of Howard Stern YouTube watching Doug. because, you know, ultimately I feel like that's partly why the show went away. You know, YouTube killed our job. YouTube was a big problem. We, we couldn't keep up with the piracy. And um, for every show we would get taken down by the legal team, 10 of them would go up to the point where we'd see a direct correlation with subscriptions starting to go down as the content on YouTube went up. And we just, it was in the infancy of piracy, basically, with people putting so much stuff up on YouTube and stealing, they just couldn't control it. <laughs> Are we listening to the show now? Do we care? Do we even, or is it too, too bitter? I'll I'll listen to some of the interviews. That's about all that I uh, that reminds me of the Stern show I worked on. Let's put it that way. the The interviews are great. The rest of the stuff, not for me. Doug, maybe I'm older. I don't know. I, I listen. I just check out the clips on Twitter, and that's it. It's evolved. It's very evolved. That show evolved to what? <laughs> I would say it devolved into. Howard and Robin having a long conversation that's very, very... I have, I have to... I'm bored, and boring is what I would call it. No, it wasn't until recently that, that I... Howard and I uh, uh, stopped speaking or communicating, I guess. Um, you know, for, for years, uh, I, I would email him every so often and... You know, how's Beth? How are you? How's your dogs? What's going on? And he'd write back. Usually not much. You know, dogs are fine. Beth's fine. You know, and that was about it. But uh, um, I wrote him. Do you remember when he, he was on the Bill Maher show? Yeah. Not all that long ago. And and those two never got along, and I and I and I told both of them a million times. You know, if you ever just sat and talked, you would like each other because you're very much the same. You know, neither one was was. But then Howard went on his show and gave what I thought was a, a just a wonderful interview, and. Uh, you know, about his therapy and how it's really turned him around and all this stuff. I thought it was just great. So I wrote him a letter, a, an email, and said, you know, wow, I, I just thought you were fantastic with Bill and, you know, and so open and honest about your therapy and, you know, congratulations and you just sound terrific. And I'm very happy for you. And, uh, uh, you know, and then the usual, how's Beth, how's the dogs? And, and but it, I mean, it was a, it was a, it was kind of a beautiful letter, you know? And he writes me back, uh, thanks, Ron, I'm a work in progress. Period. Okay, so now I'm looking at that, and I'm thinking about all the times I've written him, how are you, you know, what's going on, and gotten these one-sentence responses for the last few years. And so I wrote him back, and I said, uh, uh, and I said, Howard, you, you know what would, what would be another great, step in the right direction. I said, if you learn to say three, if you learn to type three words that would take you two seconds and make me feel good. And those words are, how are you? 
And uh, and that was that's what I wrote it. And then I didn't hear back for a long time. And then I I thought, hmm, let me see if you even got this. And so so I start to write him another email. I send it, and and it says block. Blocked. And I have like four different emails for him. Blocked all of them. And I just thought, what a little baby. You know, what a fucking little baby. You know, it's it's like the most easiest thing in the world to ask somebody. And certainly just manners. You know, just manners. I don't care how rich you are. I, you know, it's like, Howard, I know people richer than you. Okay? I've been with people richer than you. You know, I I spent five years sleeping with somebody richer than you. So, it, you know, who the fuck are you? You know, it's, it's like Al Pacino calls me back and asks how I am. You know, fuck you. I, I didn't write all that. I... I didn't respond at all. I, obviously, I couldn't anyway. But 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 that's how I feel, which is just just fuck you, Howard. You know, you've been rich and famous too goddamn long, and you forgot who your real friends are. So the hell. Yeah, well, I thought he was in therapy. I thought he was fixing himself, yeah, but this is not. <laughs> this is not seemingly the signs of someone who's uh, right minded. Yeah, it, well, it's you know, it's like he he may be doing good with some of his stuff, some of his issues, but he certainly hasn't uh, he hasn't uh, uh, you know gotten to the point where he gives a shit about anybody else, and that's terrible, you know. Uh, when when you know when Jackie left the show, I used to walk around the park with him he, he's a he's one of my best friends and uh and i and and i you know he was like i don't know what to do and, you know what what now and all this shit. i said jackie i guarantee you come with me tomorrow morning into the studio Sit down in your chair and start working. And just go with the old Hollywood, the old Hollywood saying, it never happened. <laughs> you know, it never happened. You never quit. You know, you know, you haven't been gone. I just happened to be in town and that was fun. But I said, just go back to work. He will let you. You know, he wants you to go back to work. He just wants you to swallow a little pride. Okay, you can do that. You're man enough. And just go back to work. It never happened. And he almost did it. I had him so close. And then he didn't. And uh, oh, that, that, that was really disappointing, you know, because I... I I wanted to save the day, <laughs> and and, uh, and I wanted to get Jackie back on there because I thought it was silly that he wasn't, and, and, uh, you know. But he wouldn't do it. Too prideful. Well, you know, Howard. Howard's always a bit paranoid. Howard doesn't come out of his bunker until like seven at night. And uh, but look, Howard's not a bad guy. Uh, there's just been a lot of disparaging of Howard by ex-employees like Scott the Engineer. Uh, not so much Grillo, but uh, Stuttering John for sure. Um, there's been a plethora of them who have really criticized the work environment at Sirius, notably Howard. But there's a few, there's a lot more that don't say anything. And it's sort of odd that, man, it could be, hey, like just let, I want to do something different. I don't need to talk about Howard, but there's a lot that don't want to talk about their time there. They they just will not. Yeah, there's a lot that don't, but still you have people like Jackie Martley, Stuttering John, Steve Grillo. 
they're more than willing to talk about Howard and um, Scott, the engineer. Um, Tim Sabian had a rough time there. His father was dying of cancer, and and Howard said, oh, I think we should part ways. I mean, that's not great labor relations. Uh, to me, it's more emotional terrorism. No, yeah, definitely. You, now, this was way before you started checking into him, but I always wondered what happened with that marriage. Have you ever been able to figure out you know, they're doing this, pri- yeah, private parts comes out, they're a happy couple, and a year and a half later, they're not. He just wasn't happy. I mean, they were had grown apart, and it was time to move on. Howard was miserable, and like a lot of people in relationships, and he moved on and sort of found the love of his life, although there's rumors about that marriage now that I've heard. No proof, so I don't want to get too into it, um, but... You know, Howard Stern is a legend, and he really broke new barriers in the uh, radio and communications business and set a huge template. So love him or hate him, you can't argue with his success. And he's sort of kind of bulletproof because he did a lot of stuff in the 90s that you would get canceled for now, but it's seemingly... I mean, that tape's out there. You go to YouTube and watch it in blackface. A lot of people on the show say the Me Too... Two movement would have had a field day with Howard in his show. But look, somehow he remained bulletproof. Um, you know, him and Ellen DeGeneres, they're the two big emotional terrorists now in the news. I mean, they've both been out in the media. Ellen is stepping down. Let's see how much longer Howard. I mean, he signed a new contract, but let's see if he even fulfills the whole contract. Even with that, again, I call Howard a hypocrite because... You know, he left K Rock to go to, you know, to, to to go to Sirius. You know, like why is it okay for him to leave things, but it ain't okay for me. <laughs> it's it's, a, it's very interesting. The more you talk about him, yeah, it's it's. But no one can leave, which is which is crazy. But uh, well, yeah, I mean, you, <laughs> you tell me one person, me, Jackie, Grillo, you tell me one person who's left and is actually on good terms now. I mean, we're all banned from the show. I mean, you know, that's and even Gary, if Gary talks to me, you know, he swears at me in the secrecy because he's afraid because they're not even allowed to talk to us. You know, their staff now is not allowed to talk to us. And it's like, you know, I'll put it this way. They're, they have a writer there now who I helped get the job and he was a writer. He was a, a writer's assistant on The Tonight Show and he was a friend of mine. And I helped get him a job there. And he came out to L.A. and he and he visited all his friends and he would not even visit me because he was afraid to, to hang out with me that he would, you know, that he'd get in trouble with Howard. <laughs> Sounds like a concentration camp up there at Sirius. I don't know. What's <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's a real it's a real sick place. I mean, you know, I, I've I've spoken to, you know, I've done extensive, uh, believe it or not, I have a lot of research. Um, on what goes on there now and what has what Howard has become and and I mentioned it in the book it, it's it's sad in a way he's become everything everything that he once goofed on it, he's become everything that he once loathed I mean and it, it's just sad to see the transformation I mean some of it is good because he's making up with all the people that and there's another hypocrisy you know he's making up with all these Celebs like you know Rosie O'Donnell and, and all the all these celebrities that he once trashed Jennifer Aniston, but yet he won't make up with us. He won't make up with the Stutter and John and Jackie the Junkmans who helped helped him. And in, in, in like it's not like look, he gave me my start. He he certainly helped me, but nobody's going to tell me I didn't help him by you know doing the interviews and being you know the the Esther and. You know, you know, doing stunts like stealing the, like Gary Puppet. I look, I helped him with with, with some damn good <laughs> radio. There's a stutter. I wanted to give you one so you didn't think I was a fraud. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> so once again, many folks had nice things to say about Howard, but then there's a few that did not. And um, well, here that was them talking about that. I thought people might enjoy seeing that. We're going to continue this series. I think I'm going to keep trying to find folks that uh, people are interested in hearing from. And uh, I'll take any comments in the comment section if you are interested in seeing folks who uh, that you haven't heard from in a while. 
Uh, also check out my other best of series. I have a bunch of these folks talking about when Marcy Turk arrived and uh, that's in the description. Uh, you can find that link because I think a lot of people are interested in basically kind of the change of the Stern show happening when that when that happened actually. And uh, many folks giving their Artie Lang stories and hopefully Artie will be a guest here on this show. Hopefully. But that's going to do it. I'm your YouTube friend Brad. We'll see you next time.